Now speaking, Ray Posadas, Vice President, Investor Relations and Market Intelligence. Michael Happ, President and Chief Executive Officer of Winnebago Industries, has issued their fiscal 2023 third quarter earnings results. The call is being broadcast live on the company's website for replay later today. They have also issued a news release with their third quarter results which is posted to their website. Certain statements made during today's call may be considered forward-looking statements under securities laws and the company cautions that forward-looking statements involve a number of risks and are inherently uncertain. Mike Happ will now provide an overview of the third quarter earnings results. Now speaking, Mike Happ, President and Chief Executive Officer. Winnebago Industries' third quarter results reflect macro dynamics such as subdued consumer demand for RVs in the cautious dealer network. While demand for new marine products in the categories Winnebago competes in has also slowed, it continues to be more robust and provide financial diversification for the company's portfolio. For the fiscal third quarter, Winnebago achieved $900.8 million in net revenues, consolidated gross margin of 16.8%, and adjusted earnings per diluted share of $2.13. The results are down from the historic year-ago period but remain above pre-pandemic levels. Top-line declines in the RV segments were offset by robust profitability in total RVs and continued dollar growth in the marine businesses. Winnebago remains well-positioned to capitalize on growth opportunities through the cycle and achieve their long-term value creation goals. Barletta remains a bright spot in Winnebago's portfolio, delivering sturdy growth and market share gains in aluminum pontoons, and exceeding revenue targets while dealers continue to be excited about this impressive brand. Winnebago is monitoring the consumer's ability and willingness to pay for premium-priced products at this time in the economic cycle and offering promotional retail support in adjusting product composition in the lower-priced parts of their model lineups to meet the affordability challenge. Their long-range RV market share goal is 15%. They have established solid plans to pursue and reach this target in the coming years including new products, evolving channel strategies, organic brand extension, leadership in the digital customer journey experience, and inorganic pursuits. Winnebago has recently launched the Rome Open Concept B van and Numara has introduced the smallest Class A luxury motor home in the market, the 2024 Mountain Air. They are committed to the continuous improvement of their margin performance with a focus on operational excellence, thoughtful production planning, and collaboration with their dealer partners. Winnebago has also successfully closed on the strategic vertical technology acquisition of Lithionics Battery which accelerates their innovation capabilities and diverse house battery solutions. Additionally, they have partnered with the Nature Conservancy to promote conservation and protect the outdoors. Now speaking, Brian Hughes, Senior Vice President, Chief Financial Officer. This quarter, Winnebago Industries reported consolidated revenues of $900.8 million, a 38.2% decrease year-over-year due to lower unit sales related to RV retail market conditions and higher discounts and allowances compared to the prior year, partially offset by favorable carryover price increases. Gross profit for the quarter decreased 44.5% to $151.4 million versus $273 million during the third quarter of 2022, driven by deleverage and higher discounts and allowances compared to prior year. Operating income was $80.5 million and net income $59.1 million, down 54.5% and 49.6%, respectively, compared to the prior year period and reported earnings per diluted share were $1.71 compared to $3.57 in the same period last year. Adjusted earnings per diluted share decreased 48.4% year-over-year from $4.13 to $2.13. Consolidated adjusted EBITDA was $96.4 million for the quarter, which represents a decrease of 49.7% from $191.7 million in the prior year quarter. In the total RV segment, revenues were $384.1 million, down 52.3% compared to the third quarter of 2022 primarily due to lower unit volume associated with retail market conditions and higher discounts and allowances compared to prior year. Total segment adjusted EBITDA was $53.8 million, down 54.3% from the prior year period, primarily as a result of deleverage and higher discounts and allowances compared to prior year, partially offset by favorable warranty experience. In the motor home RV segment, revenues were $374.4 million, down 27.5% from the $516.3 million recorded during the prior year period, primarily due to lower unit volume and higher discounts and allowances compared to prior year, partially offset by price increases related to higher chassis costs. Segment adjusted EBITDA was $26.8 million, representing a decrease of 58.3% from the prior year due to deleverage, higher discounts and allowances, and productivity and operational efficiency challenges. Marine segment revenues were $129 million, up slightly from the $126.5 million recorded during the prior year period due to carryover price increases, partially offset by a slight decline in unit volume. 
Marine Segment Adjusted EBITDA was 17.3 million, 12.5% lower than the same period last year, and adjusted EBITDA margin was 13.4%, 230 basis points lower, primarily due to higher discounts and allowances compared to last year. At the end of the quarter, Winnebago Industries had approximately $591.7 million in outstanding debt, representing a net debt to EBITDA ratio of approximately 0.9 times. Working capital was reduced by $80 million in the quarter, and they generated $140 million in cash from operating activities in the third quarter. The company also repurchased roughly $20 million worth of their outstanding shares and maintained their regular quarterly dividend. Now speaking, Mike Happ, President and Chief Executive Officer. Winnebago Industries is actively managing production levels and committed to controlling costs through efficiency enhancements, disciplined execution, and cost management. The company is in line with RV Industry Association shipment forecasts for calendar year 2023 and withholding comment on 2024 calendar year shipment estimates pending the remainder of 23 year playing out. Industry stakeholders are currently aligned around 350,000 estimated retail units for calendar 2023, which Winnebago supports. The company is heading into its fourth and final quarter of fiscal 2023 with a strong balance sheet and sequentially improved inventory and working capital position, while tracking and adjusting to market conditions for profitability and market competitiveness. In addition, Winnebago is repurchasing shares and issuing regular quarterly dividends, demonstrating confidence in the long-term strength of its business. With a healthy portfolio and dedicated team, the company believes it will continue to deliver value to customers and shareholders for the long term. Robert W. Baird and company analyst Craig Kennison, inquired, what is your view on the amount of RV industry destocking needed? What percentage of dealer inventory is model year 2023? Mike Happ replied, regarding model year 2022, that is correct. Our company inventory of model year 2022 RVs is lower than the industry average. We expect to reach the end of the destocking phase by the end of the year, with dealer inventories in good shape for calendar 2024. Robert W. Baird and company analyst Craig Kennison, inquired, what accounts for the increase in marine category dealer inventory? Mike Happ replied, absolutely. The Barletta pontoon business has contributed to the majority of the field inventory unit increase in the marine segment. We continue to expand that business in two distinct ways, firstly by introducing two new products, the Aria and Reserve, and secondly, with the geographic expansion of the Barletta brand. This year, we have begun shipping stocking inventory to some of these new markets, Additionally, 600 units of retail sold but not delivered units for the Barletta brand were subtracted from the field inventory number as of the end of our third quarter. Brian Hughes replied, to provide clarity on the calculation of turns, it's important to note that there is a seasonality to our marine business which always results in a portion of retail sales not yet delivered in May when we report. This was true last year and it's true this year. However, when looking at the sequential change from February to May, this will have an impact on calculated turns. We wanted to ensure we provided this insight so you can account for this accordingly. BMO Capital Markets Analyst Tristan Thomas inquired, what were the retail trends over the past quarter, and what are you seeing in June? Mike Happ replied, Q3 saw slight improvement in RV retail compared to April, with a better-than-expected week at the end of May. Marine retail, however, saw further degradation from a year-over-year perspective, particularly with pontoon products not performing as well as expected. BMO Capital Markets Analyst Tristan Thomas inquired, what strategies are you implementing to ensure premium ASPs and affordability of your brand going into fiscal year 24? Mike Happ replied, we are a portfolio of premium brands and strive to maintain a price gap between our products and lower priced options in the market. We don't always lead the pricing movement as we are a large company, so we diligently monitor competitive pricing and adjust accordingly according to each brand's preferences. This quarter, some ASPs went up while in total RV segment, it was slightly lower than usual. We understand there are affordability concerns within the RV and marine industries, and our businesses are managing that in various ways. Brian Hughes replied, I'm proud of our disciplined approach to production and capacity utilization. It helps us maintain a good forward view and our build schedule is well managed. This approach also shows in the pricing and discounts we offer relative to competitors. Roth NKM analyst Scott Stember inquired, can you discuss the pricing margins for Q4, particularly in regard to the 22 model final purge and any discounting on 23 models? Brian Hughes replied, inflationary pressures are apparent in both the motorized and marine segments year over year, while we're seeing actual declines in towables. Sequential cost environment is flat for motor home and marine, and stable for towables. Going forward, pricing will follow year over year inflation to achieve a net neutral equation in Q4. Roth MKM analyst Scott Stember, inquired, what production levels can we expect from you in the fourth quarter, and when will you begin producing and shipping out 2024 models? 
Mike Happ replied, we don't generally share production downtime information and decisions on that are made on a brand by brand basis. In Q4 of fiscal year 23, we expect more down weeks than in Q4 of 22. We worked hard in Q3 to move 2023 products across our businesses, but there's still 2023 product we're moving in June. We want to get rid of it before shipping 2024 product, as dealers may push back on 2023 pricing if we start shipping 2024 too soon. We've started making 2024 product, but not yet shipping in most businesses. Q4 may see top-line pressure due to dealers' destocking mentality and desire to protect margins by not taking aged product. This could lead to pressure in the first half of Q4. Brian Hughes replied, I believe the slowdown in retail is impacting our marine segment, as Mike mentioned. Additionally, we were building up inventories in the marine business around this time last year, making comparisons more difficult. Roth MKM analyst Scott Stember inquired, what percentage of your backlog is from 24 orders? Mike Happ replied, Scott, our motorhome backlog includes orders for the upcoming 2024 model year, which were taken at our Newmar dealer meeting in April. We also have some 23 models that will be delivered as 24s. Wolf Research Analyst Fred Whiteman inquired, Mike, could you please explain the contradiction between your expectations of softer consumer demand and cautious dealer orders and the strong May demand? Mike Happ replied, retail comps in the last week of May were promising, but it's too early to tell if this trend will be sustained. On top-line shipment demand, dealers' appetite for inventory is key. We believe we're in the later stages of the destocking cycle, and dealers are focused on 22 product, limiting 23 exposure, and being very careful about 24 openings. Winnebago Industries is in good shape for 22, and second-slash-third tier branded inventory is clearing from dealer lots. Later in 2023 and into 2024, we hope to transition to a one-on-one shipment to retail reordering cycle which could yield benefits. It's too soon to determine the impact of a single week's retail data. Wolf Research Analyst Fred Whiteman inquired, Can you explain why Tobles had better margin performance than motorized, despite the volume declines? Brian Hughes replied, Fred, on the Tobles and motorized side, the primary factor impacting margins is volume. Tobles have higher variable costs than motorized, though I won't get into details. Discounts and allowances are the next biggest contributors, with Tobles seeing favorable warranty costs, thanks to Grand Design's focus on quality. On the motorized side, we experienced disruption from our third phase of ERP implementation, causing a 1 to 1.5 point EBITDA margin drop. We think we're through the worst of it. Truist Securities Analyst Mike Swartz inquired, is 16.0% of floor level we should consider when modeling out future fiscal years? Brian Hughes replied, good morning, Mike. Thanks for the question. We're facing headwinds in Q4 due to retail environment pressures, inventory levels and pricing slash discounting. Long term, we'll differentiate through quality, service and innovation, such as lithionics. Near term, however, these pressures will make it tough to maintain our historical margins. We're striving to find operational efficiencies and be disciplined in production schedules to mitigate these challenges. Mike Happ replied, Mike, as a reminder, we have a long-term goal of achieving 19% gross margins. We remain confident that this is achievable in a healthy demand environment. Our diversification of towables and marine businesses has been beneficial to our profitability floor since pre-COVID Winnebago Industries, providing us with more stability despite potential market volatility. Truist Securities Analyst Mike Swartz inquired, what can you tell us about promotions and discounting allowance year over year, and how does that compare to pre-pandemic levels? Brian Hughes replied, I'd say that our contact levels are comparable to what we experienced prior to the pandemic. We have not seen any significant increase over 2018 and 2019. Jeffrey's analyst Patrick Buckley inquired, what strategies have you implemented to ensure long-term growth and sustainability in the current? Jeffrey's analyst Patrick Buckley inquired, what are the current levels of finished goods inventory and how do they compare to peers? Have trends improved year-to-date? Mike Happ replied, Patrick, we had less aged inventory relative to our competition at the start of 2023. Despite gains in market share in our grand design business, our field inventories were not inordinately higher than competitors as a percent of past or forward retail. However, our competitors do have higher levels of model year 2022 inventory, particularly second and third tier brands, which dealers are emphasizing to move off their lots. Brian Hughes replied, this is Brian. Yes, I was asking about our finished goods and lots. We have seen a steady increase in. Brian Hughes replied, we have a build-to-order approach to our production and our finished goods are slightly elevated due to dealers backing out of orders more frequently than in the past. However, our finished goods are still comfortable relative to the industry. Jeffrey's analyst Patrick Buckley inquired, can you comment on pricing rationality in the competitive landscape? Mike Happ replied, we are seeing rational pricing across the industry, as all players are considering ways to address affordability concerns. 
OEMs are introducing new models with fewer features or functions to reduce costs and create more budget-friendly products. Additionally, our brands are working to provide products that appeal to price-sensitive customers. We anticipate announcements and displays of these initiatives at the Elkhart Open House event in September. Morningstar analyst David Whiston inquired, Do you still have any tech gaps that need to be filled through M&A now that the Lithionics deal is complete? Mike Happ replied, The Lithionics acquisition was an investment in a strategic technology vertical that Winnebago Industries believes is important for the future. We are looking to strengthen our electrical ecosystem from a supply chain standpoint, so we have access to components needed to advance our products and brands, and differentiate in the future as more products become electrified, especially on house power. We currently have no news to announce. However, this could involve further vertical investments in the future. Our goal is to create an advantage over the next decade. Morningstar analyst David Whiston inquired, Have you noticed any major difference between Chris Kraft and Barletta customers' consumer confidence? Mike Happ replied, Chris Kraft customers are typically affluent and have a propensity to make investments in high-end discretionary outdoor products, even during difficult economic periods. Barletta customers, on the other hand, tend to be more price-conscious and rely on retail financing more than Chris Kraft customers. We have seen our market share for aluminum pontoons rise to 7.5%, but we remain mindful of affordability as an issue. Morningstar analyst David Whiston inquired, Given the stock market's performance and Barletta's overperformance, are you confident in the marine business ability to continue to succeed? Mike Happ replied, The marine industry is currently in a down cycle, and we expect the pressure to continue for the next couple of quarters. We're optimistic about our two brands, Chris Craft and Barletta, and are looking into investing in more marine assets. We are investing in people, technology, and infrastructure so that they can outpace the competition under healthy market conditions. As it stands now, RV businesses have seen more tailwinds than marine, but this could change as the industry reaches the bottom of the cycle. Raymond James analyst Joe Altabello inquired, Can you give us a better sense of how you're anticipating Tobol's pricing to develop in 24? Mike Happ replied, We're focused on keeping our pricing competitive in order to maintain our market share in the Tobol's business. We need to make sure our invoice price is right for Grand Design in Winnebago. We may adjust invoice prices as needed and be more promotionally active with Winnebago so that the ultimate retail is competitive. We'll remain on the offensive to ensure stability and growth of our market share. Raymond James analyst Joe Altabello inquired, Have you seen any recent changes in the credit environment, particularly related to RV and marine lenders exiting the spaces? Brian Hughes replied, We are not seeing any exits on either the retail or floor plan financing side. We've seen an increase in costs and interest rates of around 400 points on the retail side, with slightly less pressure on the floor plan financing side. There is a tightening of creditworthiness and FICO score requirements from retail lenders, although dealers have not reported many instances of sales falling through due to lack of financing. Despite the higher costs, overall availability of credit remains intact. City analyst James Hardiman inquired, What changes have your expectations for your business seen in recent months considering the decrease in RBA numbers? Mike Happ replied, This is Mike. We are currently in the annual planning process for fiscal year 24 and cannot provide forecasts or projections yet. However, we expect destocking of dealer inventory to be complete within the next six months which will enable us to move from a down cycle to a more supportive market environment. We are optimistic that the industry has been disciplined through this period and dealers, OEMs, and suppliers should benefit when retail stabilizes and wholesale velocity increases. Consumer engagement in the outdoors is strong, and we anticipate being able to tap into that in the near future. City analyst James Hardiman inquired, How will dealers focusing on model year 22s and lower tier brands impact your fourth quarter numbers? Mike Happ replied, We've seen an increase in shipments over the last three to six months compared to previous years. This suggests potential market share gains in the future. There are various reasons behind our current market share situation, both positive and negative, some of which are beyond our control. We're working hard to address what is within our control. For Q4, top-line conditions for both RV and marine segments may be more challenging year-over-year than Q3, limiting what we can say today. DA Davidson analyst Brandon Rawl inquired, What are your expectations for market share upside in the upcoming years given Camping World's aggressive dealership acquisitions? Mike Happ replied, We continue to closely monitor dealer consolidation across all our businesses, including the marine sector. Our brands have frontline relationships with all dealers. Currently, there is no presence of Grand Design or Newmar in Camping World stores. Our business unit leaders are proactively assessing market-by-market -market opportunities for a mutually beneficial relationship with any dealer group. We respect their efforts to build successful businesses and are open to considering a win-win scenario when it arises. DA Davidson Analyst Brandon Rawl
inquired, what promotional activity is in place to move excess model year 23 inventory at the factory level prior to the arrival of model year 24? Mike Happ replied, our discounting activity in Q4 is generally in line with pre-pandemic levels. We don't anticipate having to do significant discounting to move our remaining model year 2023 inventory. We've been successful in clearing that stock so far, and we will continue working with our dealers to ensure a smooth transition into model year 2024. As a result, there won't be any abnormal impacts to our financials. Ray Posadas replied, thank you for joining us today. It has been a pleasure to share our third quarter results with you and answer your questions.